All right, we're riding up this uh, beautiful Wednesday evening. And look at this guy in the bike lane. BA9786. Excuse me. Texting. Just the dude just sitting there texting. Wow. So literally just a block from where I picked up this bike was this POS Jersey driver trying to make a left turn. Meanwhile, you know how a left turn on a green means you're gonna hit a red light half a block away, right? So I'm walking, the guy's just pulling through the intersection, not yielding to me, continues driving a little bit. I managed to walk in front of him, he did stop, kinda, like at least he slowed down, let me cross. I walked, I was like giving him a look, he's like, hurry up. And I said, fuck you. And uh, that was the exchange. <laughs> and I'm like, this is the crap that we have to deal with. Not all drivers, but goddamn. All right. So here's the plan today. We're riding up. Well, first we're gonna try to get to the west side greenway without getting creamed by any of these um, these guys. Let's look over here. I gotta look to my left because those guys will kill you. I gotta look to my right because this van over here Thank you. He's giving me a look like I'm gonna fucking murder you and your family, and I don't give a shit. This guy, HWY3550, they are rushing to get to a red light. And because there's absolutely no paint and zero enforcement, what should be one lane here has turned into two or three. These nincompoops. This guy, he'll kill you. Galicia United, Hamden, Connecticut. Oh wow, this is the, look at this. Looks like a mom riding a, uh, it's probably hard to see, but mom riding a, uh, a uh, cargo bike. Well, a uh, trike there, up there. Oh, that's great. She just went around and, hey, look at that, Babo. Amazing. That's what I like to see. That's what the street should be full of. Parents with children. Not um, murderous, sociopathic uh, Jersey drivers who yell, hurry up to you when you're trying to cross the street safely. Uh, this is, I think this is, this street right here, all of it is considered protected. But you'll notice along the way, there is zero protection here. California closets, if he's like, yeah, you know what, I'm gonna just sneak in, make a left. Um, he could just kill me right there. So here you have this, some of the worst possible placement. This guy blocking the bike lane. This guy who's next to me. This guy who's murderous, HWY. HEK9357 is the one blocking the bike lane. And so I have to then merge. Merge is like a very nice way to put it. Um, merging makes it sound like you're sort of gracefully entering an on-ramp or something. It's not. Wow, I'm glad I get to share with this cement truck. What's going on? This is our bike infrastructure. This little strip of green paint in between a cement truck and a bunch of uh, sociopaths um, in vans. <laughs> but the mayor will not rest until the streets are safe for all children. So it's safe for everyone. <laughs> So 
I think this is episode mm, 23, I want to say. I know I'm being very generous by calling these things episodes. It implies some structure, some production value, some research. Um, but, you know, I think these things could be a lot more interesting. Maybe, yeah, if I cut 40 minutes down to like just the three good minutes. But I don't have time for that, so what are you gonna do? Woo! So on today's ride, I'm, so this evening, I'm riding up the greenway. Um, I'm gonna get out of Riverside, but I'm gonna then continue up to, I think around 120th Street and Riverside, where I'm gonna meet with Bike NYC, um, or Bike New York. And we're gonna discuss how, how we can work together with uh, reported some of the changes that we're working on. Reported, reported, the past tense of report, uh, is an app for holding drivers accountable for dangerous behavior like blocking bike lanes and blocking crosswalks. Things that are so ridiculously common in New York City, most people who you tell who I tell about the app to, tell the app, you know, who I explain the app to, don't even fully understand it because it's unclear that those things are even illegal. Um, but it holds people accountable and by submitting your complaints to 311, which is, uh, can be hit or miss but can be somewhat effective for certain types of complaints such as taxis and Ubers that are handled through the TLC. For others, like just regular illegal parking for regular private vehicles or placard abuse, um, gets routed to the local police precinct, not from the 311. And, and it gets closed immediately. So these are like submissions that are like, hey, somebody's here. And they're like, cool, closed. No action necessary. We're good. Like imagine if you were like, there's like, a, you know, a bank robbery in progress right now. And they're like, yeah, yeah, no, that's fine. We're just gonna close this. That's basically what it feels like when you're submitting these complaints all the time. Um, it's pretty amazing how inconsistent Funky bike. Pretty amazing how inconsistent police precincts really are in handling these kinds of cases. I think that's that's one thing that we've learned. It's the guy with the stroller trying to get through. He has a walk signal. Black SUV right there. He's got to go weave between a bunch of these car drive these drivers, just straight up blocking the crosswalk. Wow, that dude has straight up gear in his, on his city bike. Terrifying. <laughs> um, so, yeah, different police precincts. I think there are, geez, I don't even know. I think 50 or 70. I think there's 70 in New York City. Across five boroughs. And so when you file some of these complaints, you, you sort of get a little bit of a inside look into the mechanics of the precincts themselves. Um, I don't, but, you know, because I'm not, I'm not actually looking at any of this data individually. I, I, I don't have time, I can't. But I think the data, the patterns that you see from when you create them and then if you group them, and the results or the resolutions of these SR service requests, you can kind of get some patterns and see what's going on. So, I'll give you an example. 
Many of them will just simply close the submissions. Also instructive is how soon after the submission is open or created is it closed. Kind of tells you a little bit about what their process actually looks like. So process might be a um, a uh, you know somebody sitting in the office at a police precinct. Submission comes in through three and one. It dings them on some computer that's probably from 1998, running Windows, and shows up on some terminal. You know, it's a green screen or something. I don't know. That's how I imagine it. Uh, maybe they're a little more advanced than that, but in any case, somebody gets it who's probably in an office in in the police precinct, and they then have to route it probably to a nearby patrol car or some officer that's out or whatever at some point and then they probably enter some queue and somebody looks at it maybe maybe they go to the intersection you really have no idea if anybody's actually going on location you don't quite know when they're even dealing with this stuff because you really only get a date and timestamp of when it's closed or when it's resolved and so the average time to resolution so imagine that you create and you're like it's 8 a.m three cars they're all blocking the bike lane okay you might expect like within a few minutes somebody comes and takes a look at what's going on but that's not the case at all cops will take up to maybe six eight twelve hours to just to reply to the 311 status what i think is interesting is you really don't even know even when they're doing that that they even appeared at the location in question and what we what we believe is that the vast majority, I mean, 99 point something percent, don't have any actual uh, observation. Meaning there's probably no actual officer physically looking at the location in question. Um, and so what they do is they, they provide a sort of non-response, a templated response just says, uh, you know, no action necessary or uh, vehicle not observed and these things will happen you'll see like kind of um, time stamps of when so when it's created when it when you made it and then the next one is sort of when it comes off the queue and then the next one is when it's closed and I think you do see like time stamps where literally it's like 10 seconds goes by meaning somebody's probably just coming in looking at it be like nope and then closing it immediately and what that tells us from you know from our side of the data is that these are just not non-action they're just just data in data out they're just like marking close 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 they're basically mass deleting everything that's all they're really doing and that's very um you know that's kind of undermines the entire, like the integrity of the system and the whole process. Because with reported, um, almost overwhelmingly, like 95% of these submissions all have photos, multiple, sometimes multiple photos, sometimes video. But every, almost everything has a photo. Um, they are, um, they include a license plate, almost every case. Again, high 90%. So they have a lot of information. They have a location, they have an address, uh, you know, an address. They have actual GPS, like a URL to Google Maps. They can pinpoint exactly where the stuff is. So even if the address is slightly off, they can just look at it on a map if they really need to. They've got a license plate. They can run that license plate, you know? Um, they can do all kinds of things with the description that we provide. And what's just crazy is that um, the police effectively do nothing. It almost, it feels like nothing ever gets done. They just say, uh, nothing observed, close. And we can really, uh, we can prove this out. We have probably about 15,000 individual submissions that are like this with SR statuses. We can look them up and we can crunch the data at some point. Um, but this bears out even without our data. If you simply look at the 311 
um, website uh, for the community board, board stat, which is a project out of Beta NYC. You can run this analysis yourself. I mean, people have done it. What's crazy, what's in, kind of wild is that like this data is all there. It's kind of like in plain sight. You can see that how um, ineffective police are at responding to these basic, common, very, very consistent in the same location, same, basically find a painted bike lane, it's gonna be blocked. And uh, you almost never see cops writing tickets. At least I don't. Um, and I'm only, you know, I'm riding during rush hour. Like I'm riding in a times when it would be the busiest and most dangerous for cyclists. But de Blasio will not sleep, he will not rest until the streets are safe for children. That's the promise. New bicycle route. Cyclists, prepare to bear right ahead. But I just get up this hill. Ugh. <laughs> I don't want to bear right. I don't want to bear anything. I want to just go straight on that flat surface over there. I know my man Bill, who I chatted with the other day, says he really likes this hill. <laughs> <laughs> he likes the uh, the bypass. I think it's a good personal choice. I mean, I said that to him. Oh man, this guy's got to go up this hill. Whoa! I do not do not envy him on a city bike going up that. Super. Oh, he's walking. <laughs> he's walking. Um. Yeah. See, I mean, like, if you're like, all right, yeah, I'm gonna. I like hills because I want to add more exercise in my life and whatever. That's great. I mean, that's cool. My issue is, hey, I think that's, I think that was Dennis from Foursquare. Let's see if that, check the footage. Maybe, maybe it is, maybe it isn't. I find that I am just from talking the whole time. And I notice a little more, you know, I'm more paying a little closer attention to what I'm riding by. Look at people's faces. I had a, a dream the other day that, uh, oh, that I was riding a city bike and I flipped over the front because I hit the front brakes. <laughs> I guess it's not really funny. People really did get very seriously hurt. Um, but I had like a dream about this. I had like a nightmare. I've never actually done this. Oh man. This goddamn hill here. Can't wait for an electric. Man, parks enforcement is out. I think maybe, maybe they're looking for cyclists down on the water who sort of evade the the uh, blockage here and come through. Not because they want to be unsafe or whatever, but because they want a straight path from A to B, not a circuitous hilly path from A to B to C to D to G, you know, <laughs> I'm going that up, uh, you know, cyclists want what drivers want, they want a straight path to get somewhere, we're not just like going through the woods and enjoying our time in the park, we can enjoy these rides, but also have an efficient ride, and an efficient path. Oh, 
Oh man, this is pretty beautiful, huh? I know I say that every day. I basically say that every time, but oh, it's a little windy. That's my shadow. What's up? Doggy. Dog in the shadow. I don't know if you can see that. Um So I'm gonna get up to Riverside and then head up. I think that's how to go. It's probably a safer route, but I don't know it. Shower up to Hudson, Henry Hudson Parkway, or the West Side Highway. This is traffic. I'm upset by that. But don't, but don't charge me more for gas. Don't charge me more for uh, tolls. Don't charge me a congestion price to come into the city or out. Um, don't charge me for parking. How dare you take away my free parking? Um, but I can't believe all these other people also have the same idea as me to take their car and drive into the city to commute. What a disaster. The, this 100-year experiment of cars <laughs> that we're digging ourselves out of now. I think we're going to really mess this one up. I don't think anyone's really, like, learned their lesson, you know? That cars are really, really bad for most, most things. It turns you into an asshole. It ruins the environment. They're expensive. They cost cities massive amounts of money to subsidize, to pave and snow removal and opportunity costs and everything and they kill a fuck ton of people they're the number one killer number one guns are number two we're all we're all frantic about number two but like nowhere near as frantic about number one like the number one killer of people of children of elderly maybe not elderly but children for sure i read a stat there's 2,000 children a year, 2,000 are killed by cars. And that obviously like we know that the number one killer of teenagers is traffic crashes, you know, nuts. Uh, so should I go straight or should I climb up here? Uh, I don't know. I think I'm going to go this way because I know it. But I think it's probably like not the right path. No. Cool. Kids having fun. I guess, I don't know, I don't know what's going on back there. Um, oh, this is interesting. What is this route over here? Oh man. Oh, I think I could go, huh, maybe I could go straight this way and climb up a little later. 
Um, let me just see. Let me just see what's going on here. Oh man, I'm pretty late, but what are you gonna do? I think it's better to just get off, um, get onto the uh, road that I'm familiar with. Well, maybe this way has a path up. Hmm. Yeah, this is probably, I think this is probably good. All right, let's try this. I'm gonna do some exploring here. No, bro. <laughs> Dog wants to kill me. I got enough. I got enough bullseyes on my back here. These drivers. Now I got this little dog. This yappy dog. Boy, I really hope I don't hit stairs here. Oh man, wow. Huh. stairs. Where are we? I should know this, but I don't. I think this comes out. They should. All right, so let's see what we're dealing with. Jeez, I gotta get up to the top there, but I don't know where uh, where I can enter. I'm just looking for the next place to go. I have a feeling it does pop out at like 120. That's my instinct. this what's that oh no
Give me a break here. Ah, uh, oh, okay, up here. I think there's a, a path, okay. I think I can go up here. This is fun. This is Riverside Park. Up in the 100 teens. Um, let's see if I can get out without having to carry my bike up the stairs. Oh my God, look at these hills. Whew. I'm just like grunting and complaining this whole path. But this is really, I mean, this is a beautiful little spot here. Oh no, this is not a path. Oh, God damn it, come on. All right, fine. Not ideal here, guys. Just come on. <sighs> it's my bad for not planning anything. Hey, doggy. ahead with a bike. How about turn the stairs into a ramp? For Christ's sake. All right. We're here. I think I'm going to check out now. Thanks for watching, gang. Um, which side of the street? Yeah, uh, it's right there. Okay. Oh, well, thanks for watching. Like and subscribe. And I will catch you uh, on the flip side. Bike talk at NYC.